Okay guys, I'm here today with my coach, John Danaher. As usual, it's a huge honor for me. And as you may notice, <laughs> I am not Bernardo Faria. This is John Danaher, however, and this is Bernardo Faria's channel, but I am not Bernardo. John, why isn't Bernardo here? I heard, man, there's a strong rumor going around. Michael Zenga told me that Bernardo is on a private jet flying to Sao Paulo, sipping fine champagne and caviar, mm. living life with private chef. Interesting. He left us peasants here to do the donkey work. That's I don't know it. what happened. But, That's uh, it. We're the blue collar yeah, guys. I tried to call him. He was like, yeah, I don't have time to talk to you guys. I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to the private airport. So, so it's, it's similar that if you went to Amazon headquarters, you wouldn't see Jeff Bezos there. Excellent. So then why would we expect Bernardo to be at NBC <laughs> Fanatics work? Solid point. Yeah. Solid point. Yeah. <laughs> um, but here we are. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, the video coming up. Yeah, so uh, John just finished filming an entire new instructional series, The Fastest Way, and we just finished doing the very first installment in the series. And John, what is the first installment about? The, uh, the video series itself is about, uh, there are certain skills in, in Jiu-Jitsu that you want to learn, and many people express to me when they uh, watch videos, okay, show me the fastest way to learn a given skill. Um, there's some skills that people, I think, uh, value more than others, and they, they want to do two things. They want to learn the skill, but they also want to do it in the shortest possible time. And um, I think probably one of the greatest skills that people want to, to learn in this sport is the skill of submissions. Everyone joins up this sport because they want to better submit people. No, no one joins Jiu-Jitsu to win by advantages or, or win by points. Or learn any elbow. <laughs> um, they want to learn how to submit people. And uh, you know, there's nothing better at the end of a training session where you, you submitted five guys back to back. You're like, man, you come out feeling like a, like a king. You know, if you come out and not submitting anybody, or even worse, you get submitted, it, it, it's the worst feeling. So um, uh, many times people ask me, okay, is there a, a realistic way in which I can increase my submission rate in the least amount of time? And I believe the answer is yes. Uh, I'm not a miracle worker. I, I can't uh, give you something which is uh, where you just start submitting people better than yourself in, in, in a matter of days, that's not gonna happen, that's not the way Jiu-Jitsu works. But you can create a realistic program where someone can take whatever submission rate they currently have and within a, a, a much shorter time frame than most people believe, bump it up significantly. And this video is exactly about that. It's, okay, I want to increase my submission rate, show me how to do it in the least amount of time. And this video is exactly the answer to that question. Um, the general answer that I propose is that you want to focus on uh, uh, a single submission that has the widest applicability, is very high percentage, and is learned in such a way that you have such technical depth and nuance that you can break through very, very strong defenses. So there's, those are the four key elements. You've got to have focus, okay? If you're trying to learn 10,000 things at the same time, you're never going to make fast. You, you can make progress over a long time, but you're not going to make fast progress. Speed of progress is directly related to focus, okay? So we're going to take one submission hold and focus on that. So you have limited options that forces the student to just improve in this, in this one critical, uh, critical area. Now, the question becomes, okay, well, which submission hold do you, do you choose? And I'm going to encourage you to go for the most high percentage one that has the widest applicability. There's so many fascinating submission holds out there. Um, but when it comes to high percentage, uh, that is a submission hold which works for the greatest number of body types, greatest number of skill levels against the widest array of opponents, I will always go with the rear naked frame. I think it Historically, it's always been the number one submission in Jiu-Jitsu. In the last five years in top-level competition, it's been very heavily challenged by heel hooks. The, the leg lock revolution has definitely had an effect. But even now, there's a slight edge to, um, uh, to strangle holds from the back. I do believe that as time progresses, the number of heel hook submissions in Jiu-Jitsu will start to go down as defense starts to uh, improve and you get a normalization of, 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 uh, uh, of leg locking. And I do believe that then uh, rear strangles will go back to being the, the solid winner because intrinsically no other position in the sport gives you the 
asymmetry and attacking potential versus uh, your, your opponent's ability sure. to, to attack back in the back. Nothing. Sure. Like, you show me the best Ashigarami, there's still a chance you can be caught by a knowledgeable opponent. Who wins in a leg lock shootout comes down to knowledge. Um, but who wins in the back situation? If you have two evenly matched people, the back is so dominant, the one attacking will almost always win. So um, I want to focus on that one submission. Uh, when it comes to uh, submission holds, there are some submissions which are fascinating. Th say, for example, a, a buggy strangle. It's a fascinating strangle. It's very effective. If it's done well from, from bottom position, it, it's a very effective strangle. But it takes a certain kind of body type to be able to do it. I, I would think it would be a very difficult thing to teach someone who is 40 years old and not very flexible to hit a buggy strangle. Sure. Um, they might be able to do it on some people, but not many. Yeah. Um, if you're in an open weight division and you're fighting someone twice your size, it's unlikely you're going to be able to hit a buggy. Um, and so it's a fascinating stranglehold, but it's it's not, in that sense, high percentage, the way a rear naked is. That'll work on anybody, any time, any skill level. Um, also, applicability. Uh, a buggy strangle only works in certain scenarios, mostly associated with bottom side control. Uh, you can do it from bottom half guard, uh, even close guard, but then you get into more low percentage uh, variations. Uh, the rear naked can be entered into from any position, standing ground, top, bottom, doesn't matter. If you can just get past your opponent's elbows or split his legs or uh, bring his head down, you can get to the back. The back is a huge target. It's a very, very significant percentage of your overall body surface area. It's a big target, and uh, and once you get there, it's there's almost nothing your opponent can do offensively back at you, unlike a leg lock shootout where you can both attack each other. Um, look at the example of John Carlo on ADCC. He was in an Ashigarami being attacked and then counter-attacked and, and submitted a, a, yep. his opponent in that fashion. That's never going to happen with the back situation. Yep. Um, so for those reasons, I've chosen the, the rear naked strangle as uh, the single submission that I want people who want to increase their submission rate in the least amount of time to focus on that. And then the rest of the video is fleshing out the idea of technical proficiency. If you're going to make this your specialty, be good at it. Sure. Like know all the technical nuances, all the technical details. And, uh, and go to work. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, some of the aspects of, of focus. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time in the video talking about the idea of, uh, of mental focus and how recognition of opportunity is a big part of the speed of your progress. Um, let's look at a, a simple example. Plus, you know, if, if I said to you, when you drive home tonight, I want you to look and notice how many white Toyota Corollas you see on the way home. You would be, okay, let me, let me do this. And as you drive home, your eyes are scanning for a white Toyota Corolla. Sure. And you're shocked to discover that on the way home you saw 12 of them. And you would suddenly think, man, there's a lot of white Toyota Corollas out there. Um, you might think, it would be ludicrous to think, well, I guess on that one day there were just more Toyota Corollas on the street than, than normal. No, absolutely not. It's just that you were looking for them. And because you looked for them, you saw them. Those same Toyota Corollas were all around you every other day you were driving, but you just weren't looking for them. Your brain just filtered them out. Yep. When you're looking for something, you'll see it. Same thing in Jiu-Jitsu. When you're looking for something, you'll see it. When you focus your mental attention on attacking the back, you will see opportunities that you were blind to every other time you were, you were rolling. So what I try to get students to do is heavily emphasize one aspect of their game. And as a result, they're looking for the opportunities. Now the question becomes, okay, if I'm sparring someone, well, what am I looking for? And the big thing we push in this video was head, elbows, legs. Okay, so we have a training partner here in front of us. If I'm in bottom position, my ability to expose your back is gonna come down to my ability to work your head, get outside of your elbows, or split your legs. So for example, if I can hoist up and then from here to bring the head down, now my head's higher than yours, there's a mountain of back exposure here. And now we've got the back in front of us. With regards to the elbows, anytime we're working down here on the floor, we can take 
a situation where I get outside of the elbow to give up bag exposure, regardless of how it goes into the occurring. Okay, and now we can start attacking the back. If we have a leg up, and from here, if I can ever go through this, uh, uh, good. if we can ever go through and split our training partner's legs, we're going to generate that explosion in our training partner. And so the three visual cues that we're always trying to work with is this idea of the head, the elbows, and the knees. We're always trying to go through the knees, out the back door, to the back, get outside of the elbows, or bring the head down. And so this simple visual cue, sure, three simple things, head, elbows, knees, uh, means that you can, it, the more you look for those three things, the more opportunities you're going to find to take your opponent's back. Um, this kind of uh, mental aspect ne almost never gets discussed in training. People talk about it as exclusively a physical skill, but there's also this mental skill of seeing opportunity. Sure. On only when you see opportunity can you actually turn into the physical reality of taking you know, your, your opponent's back. So that idea of elbows, head, and splitting the knees is big. We also saw elements, uh, take a seat, where working from leg entanglements, from situations like this, we looked at the idea of coming up on training partners, and then from here controlling our training partners, top leg, and even from here going through, exposing the training partners back. That was a corollary of, of splitting the legs, working outside of the legs. And so um, there were there was this idea of the <coughs> mental training, of, of training your mind to see opportunity. And then that was backed up with the, the vast majority of the video was the physical skills of, okay, if we're gonna get through the back, um, how are we gonna, <coughs> uh, how are we gonna get through the back, how are we gonna maintain the back, and how are we gonna finish from the back? Now, you were asking some uh, interesting questions while we were filming, plus where you talked about, okay, what made this video different from, say, into the system, yeah, I, control. I, I, I really, number one, I really enjoyed some of the newer and fresher concepts you brought into the play. For example, John called what he just, what he just mentioned, the head, the elbows, and splitting the knees and the instructional, he called the three gateways to the back. That's something I found very helpful. Secondly, when we were filming, I've had the great pleasure of filming with John now for several years now. We filmed Enter the Back, uh, Enter the System, Back Attacks, how long ago now? I think it was 2018. So it's, it's been a while is my point. So if you, if you look at the contents of this next instructional, the fastest way, you'll see that it's very back dominant. It's a very back dominant instructional. It focuses entirely on getting to the back and finishing from the back. Now, what I was telling John was, people will probably ask, so why should I buy this new instructional if it's just more back material? I know for a fact, because I filmed it with John, there's a lot of new and different material here, but I'll let John expound a little bit more and ask him the question. John, what is one of the main differences when, between this when, one and yeah, that's uh, a great question. the system? When Into the System Back Control came out, it was uh, largely in response to a huge demand at that time of explaining how my students, in particular, uh, Gordon Ryan, Gary Tone, and, and Eddie Cummings were dominating EBI competition with, with back strangles. Um, uh, I think it, like, almost 100% of their submissions either came from leg locks or back strangles in those days. And um, uh, in particular, uh, Gordon and Gary were using their, their legs to trap people's arms. And they were doing so in a way which is a little different from the traditional methods. Traditionally, you know, people have been trapping arms for, for years. Sure. And, um, uh, most people saw that as kind of a spontaneous thing where if you were just behind someone and you saw a kind of a spontaneous opportunity to stuff a wrist down and go in and trap an arm and then go in and strangle that was the, the traditional way of doing things so you, you see people like bj Penn or myself and just here we yep. do this now we just see an opportunity throw a leg over the top trap sure. the arm and strangle and then suddenly you had these these youngsters doing it in what appeared to be like a very systematic way where they were going through complicated gripping sequences to, to trap arms. And it seemed to be like a step-by-step -step procedure sure. rather than just an intuitive thing where you just saw an opportunity and threw, threw the foot over. So into the system back con uh, control was essentially uh, a video on the straitjacket system, how to systematically trap someone's arm, set up strangles from the back. And that was uh, the overwhelming majority of its content was just a, a, a long explication of okay this is how we trap people's arms and set up strangles um, this video on the other hand is much more about how to get to the back or how to maintain the back and how to finish from the back 
and there's a long section on what to do if you cannot trap your opponent's arm. There's going to be, especially in the modern uh, context of Jiu-Jitsu, where people are very cognizant sure. now of the danger of getting an arm trap. People sure. defend it much better than they did in 2018. Sure. And so um, uh, there's a whole section there on, okay, if you can't get the straight jacket system to work, what are you going to do now? Sure. And uh, so there's a whole bunch of strangles that come out of that situation. So it's very different insofar as there's far more emphasis on how to get to the back, how to recognize opportunity visually and mentally, uh, how to exploit that physically. Um, uh, we looked at the idea of getting to the back from uh, inferior position, from neutral position, and from superior position. Uh, we looked at how to uh, get to the back out of leg lock scrambles, and, um, uh, and then how to stay on your opponent's back despite a lot of resistance, and then finishing both with uh, uh, trapping arms and also when you cannot trap arms. Sure, sure. Yeah, and uh, I'll just you know uh, reiterate what John just said. There is a lot of new material in this instructional, rest assured. If you buy this new one, you won't just be getting a regurgitation of uh, enter the system back attacks. Well, in either case, by the time you see this video, the new series, the fastest way, how to increase your submission percentage may or may not be out by the time you see this video. If it is out already, go on bjfanatics.com and check it out. Check out all the links in the description. John, thanks so much for your time. Good to see you. Pleasure. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.